congratulations, you're halfway through. In module two, we explored how to identify fire hazards. In this module, you'll learn how to document and report your observations and findings using the Firewatch log sheet and silver track. Get your notepad and pen ready. We're about to look closely at one, reporting protocols, two, legal and regulatory compliance, and three, reporting with silver track. So let's get started. One, reporting protocols. As a fire watch guard, you are the eyes and ears of fire prevention and safety. When you identify and document fire hazards, you minimize incidents and protect lives and properties. You should take this responsibility very seriously. When clients hire ACS fire watch guards, they expect guards on duty to fill out a fire watch log sheet. The fire watch log sheet is a summary of what took place during your shift. Accurate documentation is an essential aspect of your fire watch duties. You are responsible for recording all fire watch activities and any incidents that take place during your shift. Your reports are crucial as they are used to identify potential risks and they ensure that everything fire related is compliant with local and state regulations. So let's break this down. In the first step, let's learn how to properly fill out the fire watch log sheet. Now you might be patrolling a construction site with electrical hazards or an industrial plant where workers are welding metal. Now wherever you are, you must fill out the fire watch log sheet by hand every 30 minutes. Upon starting your fire watch shift, fill out the top portion of the log sheet with your name, your contact information, and the date. And be sure to write legibly. These logs are shared with ACS clients as a record of your patrol. Now, if something were to happen during your shift, the fire watch log could become an official record for an investigation. So keeping detailed and legible records of your watch is an essential part of your job. The fire watch log sheet includes the address of the facility with the name of the fire watch guard on duty. It contains the date and time of the fire watch and the observations you recorded during your patrol. Also, any communication that you may have had with the fire department alarm monitoring company and 911. If you are stationed at a high hazard facility or area, you should patrol the site every 10 minutes. You will be provided with a site map and instructions so you can plan your patrol routes. It's important that you inspect the whole site when making your rounds. Now note that every site you watch poses a different set of risks. You must follow the instructions for each site as fire watch requirements may be different. In the fire watch log, you should record any hazard identification, any safety violations, any emergency response, and any communication with the fire department personnel, emergency services, or supervisors regarding fire safety. So for example, you may write potential fire hazard flammable debris near storage containers, or employees smoking in restricted areas, or maybe unusual odor in the laundry facility. So along with these observations, you should also note what action you have taken. For example, did you notify the building manager about the flammable debris near the storage containers? Did you ask employees not to smoke in prohibited areas? Did you call the fire department and building manager to let them know of any unusual odor in the storage room? If you have questions about your observations and you're not sure what action to take, just contact dispatch or your ACS supervisor. If all designated areas are clear, simply report no unusual activities or incidents. Reporting everything in writing is essential, but you have to remember, if there are any signs of fire, such as smoke or unusual odors or flames, you should first call the fire department or 911 if it is a life-threatening emergency. Then you'll report the incident or emergency in writing. Just be sure to report hazards, incidents, and emergencies on the day that they occur. At the end of your shift, you must sign and date your fire watch log sheet. 
Two, legal and regulatory compliance. There are two main reasons that you're asked to accurately report your findings. A, Firewatch logs show ACS and their clients that the Firewatch guards are following fire safety protocols and procedures. And B, this documentation is mandatory and essential for regulatory compliance, for insurance purposes, and for legal liability. Consider this scenario. On a construction site, a Firewatch guard notes a pile of oily rags near an ignition source, and he thinks, no big deal, nothing will happen, right? Doesn't report it. Say the rags catch on fire, and this causes huge damage to the building under construction. Who would be liable? The Firewatch Guard and ACS could be held liable for the guard's negligence, and the construction site owner or manager could also be held liable for fire damage. Nobody wants a lawsuit on their hands, so don't ever think that a hazard is too insignificant to report. Not reporting it could have huge consequences. ACS clients need to trust that all Firewatch guards are doing their job diligently and providing detailed documentation of every patrol at the end of their shift. Regulatory compliance refers to laws, regulations, codes, and standards for fire prevention and safety. All sites will have a fire prevention plan that explains the measures in place to prevent fires. It is your duty to comply with local, state, and federal fire prevention and safety regulations. And for that, you need to understand what those regulations are. So let's take a closer look at these regulations. Fire detection and alarm systems. Property managers must install and maintain fire detection and alarm systems. This is mandatory. This includes smoke detectors and fire alarms that alert occupants and authorities when a fire breaks out. Emergency evacuation procedures. Property managers must establish emergency evacuation procedures and conduct evacuation drills to designated assembly areas. Evacuation routes must always be clear and include proper signage. Fire suppression systems. Property owners and managers must install and maintain fire suppression systems, such as fire extinguishers, sprinkler systems, and fire hoses to contain and extinguish fires. Hot work permits. Now, in most cases, business owners have to obtain permits for hot work activities to make sure that precautions are in place to prevent fires. Electrical safety. Property managers must follow electrical safety standards to prevent electrical fires. Handling of hazardous materials. Property managers must comply with the safe handling storage and disposal of hazardous flammable materials. Training and education. Business and property managers must provide fire safety training and education to employees and occupants to ensure that everyone knows how to respond to a fire emergency. And finally, record keeping and documentation. Property and business owners must keep accurate records of fire prevention measures, inspections, drills, training sessions, and incident reports. These include fire watch logs. Number three, reporting with silver track. In this last part of the module, we're gonna take a look at reporting electronically using silver track. Now, depending on the instructions you receive, you may be required to fill out a Firewatch log sheet by hand or electronically using SilverTrack. Sometimes ACS clients will require both handwritten and electronic versions. To report, you need to first download the SilverTrack app to your smartphone. And once that's downloaded, Dispatch will give you your login and activate your account. SilverTrack is ACS's main reporting system. It will enable you to A, report any activities and incidents, B, update your daily activity reports, and C, include photos and audio files. Visual documentation is just one of the benefits of submitting your fire logs electronically. Photos provide direct evidence of potential hazards, safety issues, or incidents that take place during your watch. For example, your report could include photos of overloaded electrical outlets, 
exposed wiring, or flammable materials that are stored near open flames. Or if you happen to notice that an exit route is blocked by a vehicle, include a photo with your report. Capturing images of a fire incident can provide direct evidence for a later investigation, but while doing so, never put yourself at risk. Safety is your top priority. Always maintain a safe distance from smoke and flames. Inhaling smoke and heat exposure can have severe health effects. The information that you report on Silver Track every 30 minutes is GPS tracked and available in real time on the issue monitor at the ACS office. Silver Track will also generate a daily activity report that will be sent to the client at the end of your shift. So if you've been asked to report via Silver Track, but it's down or not available, just first contact dispatch to report the issue and see if you can troubleshoot the problem. If not, dispatch will inform you to fill out the Firewatch log sheet. Your supervisor will pick up all completed reports from the site at the end of your shift. ACS will also provide you with a notepad to take detailed notes as you make your rounds. If Silver Track is down and no paper report is available, use your notepad to record your observations and time of patrol. And remember, Always write neatly and legibly with proper spelling of locations and names. This concludes Module 3. Have you taken detailed notes? Let's ask a few questions, see if you can answer them. Why is it important to document and report your findings on the Firewatch log sheet? How about, how often should a Firewatch guard patrol the site? Can you name two fire prevention and safety regulations? What are the advantages of using photos with your electronic fire log? If you don't know the answers, just go back and review module three. Take good notes so that you have them handy for the final quiz.